Who doesn't love an election, hey? Victoria is now officially underway. And while Dan Andrews and Matthew Guy have already hit the campaign trail, it's shaping up to be a highly managed affair, as they typically are these days, with both candidates seemingly avoiding interactions with voters, with the actual public. Labor's also thrown the first campaign punch, re releasing an ad that tries to draw a strong link between Matthew Guy and federal Liberal leaders. Have a look. The coalition has real solutions. Real solutions. Now, the truth of this budget is the load falls heaviest on the poorest, on the sickest, on those least able to bear the load. I think not give the issue uh, the attention that is necessary to get real solutions. Real solutions. You know, I don't hold a hose, mate. I'm that guy and I promise to deliver real solutions. Real solutions. A couple of interesting things about that ad, aren't there? First of all, the Labor lines delivered by the ABC's Fran Kelly front and centre. And the other is Tony Abbott and Real Solutions. Wouldn't you love him back to sort this country out now? Joining me now is The Australian's Victorian political reporter, Rachel Baxendale. Thanks for joining us, Rachel. Uh, you must be super keen that the campaign's finally underway, but uh, the trouble is no-one's seeing many options here except the uh, you know the status quo uh, daniel andrews uh, expected to be returned it's just a matter of uh, what happens around the margins is that the case Look, it's, it, it is an interesting uh, campaign and certainly if the polls are right and, um, you know, that they haven't always been in recent years, but uh, they are pointing very much to, to an Andrews win. But I think it is a story of different dynamics in different parts of the state and I, I think the only thing I'm certain about is I think we will have a larger crossbench at the end of all this. At the moment, uh, Victoria's parliament it's 88 seats, Labor have got 55, the Coalition have got 27, the Greens have three, and there are three crossbenchers, all of whom are regional crossbenchers at the moment. Um, I would expect there to maybe be a, a couple more Greens and maybe be a couple more Teals, although it's, it's a slightly different dynamic with the Teals in Victoria to what it was federally, because we do have some contests where it's genuinely a three-way contest between Labor, Labor, Liberal and Teals. Um, and the seat of Hawthorne, for example, Labor will almost certainly lose and it's really a, a, a liberal teal contest there, um, that, that being um, part of what was Josh Frydenberg's seat until May. Yeah, I think, uh, look, all the election results we've had uh, in the last little while, the polls have been around the mark. I think a lot of people who get it wrong blame the polls, but the, there have been no total surprises. Mm. Uh, but if Daniel Andrews were to lose this, it would turn, turn the, the polls on their ear, I suppose. But you're so right to point to the rising numbers of crossbench and minor party members. You're likely to get that. We've seen that federally. We've seen that in other states. I suppose the big question is whether this is a permanent trend in Australia or whether... Uh, whether we'll come to our senses and, and go back to sort of governing parties in, in the future. What, what do you see as the key campaign messages from either side? Let's start with, with Daniel Andrews. Uh, presumably his argument is that, you know, Victoria's done all right, I've been a strong leader, stick with me and, uh, and we'll fix hospitals and transport. Oh, look, I think it's, you know, essentially um, I'm, I'm a safer pair of hands than the other mob, I suppose, yeah. from, from Daniel Andrews. And, and I think it's, it's been interesting. I think there was an advertisement that the CFMEU put out last week. I don't know whether you saw it, Chris, but to me, in a lot of ways, I think it kind of summed up the position that Victoria's in. Um, they, they said, I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to use this word, but, but their ad said, um, you know, Dan, Dan might be a prick, but he's, <laughs> you know, he's spent, he's, he's building $30 billion worth of infrastructure. You know, he's, he's, he's spending however many, many billion dollars on this and that, and it'll keep us in jobs for 30 years. Because um, uh, the reality... <laughs> I've played footy, yeah. I've that, played footy um, with a few guys like that. I've played footy with a few pricks, but you want them, <laughs> rather them on your side than the other side. 
Yeah, he, he may be a prick, but he's our prick, I suppose, <laughs> is, is the message. Um, <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I, and, and I suppose the other thing I was going to say um, when we were talking about teals before is that there is some diversity in, um, or not so much teals as, as a cross-bench and independent candidates. There are parts of the outer suburbs that have traditionally been very safe Labor seats that are perceived as being as having been neglected by Labor for a considerable period, where where there are independents who may be in in with a shot, who are you know genuinely separate. They're not sort of part of Climate 200. They're they're genuinely independent independents. So um so it will be interesting to see how how some of those candidates do in seats like Melton and Point Cook, for example. Well, let's look at the Liberal side and the Liberal message. Of course, they've had trouble finding strong leadership over the time and they've had leadership changes. Matthew Guy's in the seat now. I think we've got some pictures of the, the Ditch Danmobile, an ambulance that they've been using as a campaign uh, ploy today, as uh, suggestions that it might be against the law to actually have a fake ambulance. I think that's a bit of froth and bubble. But it obviously shows they want to focus on health and, and that's, of course, linked to pandemic management as well. The, how strong is this argument for them, do you think? Oh, look, I think there's no doubt that Victoria's hospital system is in crisis and that message, um, you know, and, and, and people are feeling that every day. I think the question is whether or not the coalition can convince people that they would actually do a better job. Um, and I think the other the other aspect of it that, that is interesting is uh, Matthew Guy wants wants to make this um, quite rightly call call the government out um, in terms of the the problems with their health policy. But meanwhile, Daniel Andrews is running his campaign out of the Australian Nursing and Midwifery um, Federation's headquarters, the Nurses Union headquarters. So um, that's that's also an interesting dynamic. It sure is. These big. Public sector unions are now very, very important for Labor and you hear a lot of them during the campaign. Thanks for that, uh, Rachel. We'll keep tabs on it over the next few weeks. Thanks, Chris. Rachel Baxendale there. You can read her reporting and analysis of the election campaign in the Australian newspaper. I just want to show you a cartoon from Mark Knight in the Herald Sun from a day, yesterday, I think it was. And this is uh, Dan Andrews using taxpayers' money, of course, to sponsor the Australian Diamonds netball team. And he's got them in the Victoria deficit blowout. That's for C, the gold affairs. Victoria, the pothole capital. Uh, and the health system in crisis. Victoria, triple zero chaos. And Dan's longest lockdown. I don't think... We're going to see those slogans on our netballers, even though they would be perhaps a bit more truthful than some of the spin we're getting from Labor and Daniel Andrews. I can't believe that Victorians have had that done to them by a government and that they're going to return them. Never mind what the alternative is like. It's going to be a verdict on the government, the most locked-down city in the world.